Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It's great to have you here once again. If it's your first time check out the show, you know what to do. Smash the old likey, leave me a whole commentee down below, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. That'll be much, much appreciated. But if you don't want to do it, I also understand, isn't it? You get these messages all the time, people telling you to like stuff, share stuff, subscribe to stuff, and it can be a bit annoying. You're like, you know what? Leave me alone. Let me watch the video and judge for myself. And of course, if you're gonna watch the video and judge for yourself, then do so. If you're gonna do it beforehand, I would also love it very much. <laughs> oh mate, this is a pretty funny, funny little thing that's happened in the last what hours or so. So it looks like that. Aaron Teal has started to wage war on Brendan Shaw for some unknown reason. Um, I would like to say I know what the reason is, being a casual MMA fan myself. And the term casual MMA fan too is really a funny, isn't it? MMA must have some of the worst and best fans you know, in the history of the world, right? A world champion kind of loses his belt in a title fight and then quite instantly, the same fans that were cheering him on are the ones calling him a pussy and that in the comments, right? So some of the worst fans, but also some of the best fans because they're super knowledgeable, right? They'll know about, you know, fights that you had in barn in garden somewhere in the middle of serbia and they'll follow your entire career and really kind of back you buy all your merch and all that good stuff so they can come you know they can kind of operate on both ends of the pole but the term casual mma fan is always cringe but hey you have to always kind of throw that little asterisk out there just in case all the mma fans start flooding your comment section and telling you and setting you straight as to what person's record was and all that malarkey it's, it can get a little bit annoying anyway so it looks like that until doesn't really have that much time for brendan shaw but if i'm not mistaken the beef might have stemmed from earlier on in Darren Till's career when he had to fight Donald Cerrone and if I'm not mistaken that was when the whole conversation around Donald Cerrone was like hey this guy could be a champion if he was a bit more careful with his career he's just willing to fight anyone and anyone at, at, at kind of short notice because he wants to be pally pally with Dana White and that's damaging his career and might lead to him getting severe brain damage you know there was this conversation around whether or not he's that's a good tactic for Donald Cerrone and also whether or not that was a sign all these losses that he was having that he should maybe hang up his gloves right that was a conversation i was having and i think one of brendan's hot takes was something around that kind of mark and then when he got announced that i think Soroni jumped in last minute to fight darren till if i'm not mistaken again correct me in the comment that's when obviously for some reason brendan kind of took it upon himself to kind of dismiss darren till's record prior to joining the ufc and kind of made it seem as if like he was a nobody and then i guess darren till didn't really take that too well and then ever since then he's kind of held a bit of a grudge against brendan which is understandable but then obviously and Brendan's side of things too which is weird whenever somebody doesn't like him <laughs> like in terms of just what he has to say in terms of his commentary which is weird because you know he's got his own show below the belt you'd imagine if you're somebody that has kind of consistent hot takes which he doesn't really have he just you know he says kind of brain dead stuff but if you have consistent hot takes you should expect to get a bit of pushback from people and you know to maybe ruffle some feathers and maybe some people might not like you for some reason whenever somebody doesn't like him he also goes out of his way to not like the person too which is severely unprofessional right he might pretend like oh no he's my guy I root for him he doesn't really root for him so they've got this little weird silent beef that they have going on and i guess this all came to a head when darren till finally um, stumbled upon the footage of brendan shaw popping into logan paul's dressing room to congratulate him for hanging in there i guess uh, with his fight against flo mayweather and giving a good account of himself and on paper you know the video isn't that bad but because it's brendan shaw but it just looks really cringe right you got this man that's like you know nearly 40 essentially trying to clout chase um with these guys um off the back of this fight and it just kind of came across a a little bit you know a little bit cringe and here's a video itself from darren till's actual account and you can see here his caption uh petition to kick brendan shaw out of mma world and obviously the video you know it, it kind of self-explanatory why this would make someone like a darren till vomit into his mouth Who's yeah. it's a win <laughs> what the fuck brendan <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck it's a win it's a win it's a win i don't know i don't know it's not it's fucking crazy. You're fucking alien. <laughs> That's what he said. Here's what's crazy then. So that that so the first two he's feeling out. That fourth, fifth, and sixth, he's, that's the best he has trying to take you out. He's fucking chill. Unreal. You guys should be fucking stoked. I don't know what to do, bro. He's not stoked. Yet. All right. All right. <laughs> stoked. You guys be stoked. Yeah. Yeah. So you can understand why that was incredibly cringe, you know, in, in, in an effort to maybe rewrite the narrative or to maybe make it make sense in some weird, bizarre way. Luke Thomas decided to jump in on the whole debacle and kind of offer his two pence on it. And to be fair to Luke Thomas as well, I think, like I said, I'm, he's one of my favorite MMA analysts on YouTube. He's somebody that I kind of, you know, watch all of his content when it comes to UFC cars to get a better understanding on, you know, how somebody like him, who's kind of balls deep in the sport, is viewing who's going to win a particular card. But 
but you can understand why he would kind of go hell for level when it comes to Brendan because he essentially handed Luke Thomas a career at Showtime there's a lot of kind of infighting within the MMA media world with journalists right it's a little bit douchey a little bit cringe they're all big dorks really but you know you can understand why he would actually want to really back his boy Brendan because you know hey he helped me out professionally so I don't really see how the the public sort of view Brendan as he does which I understand but his rationale was a little bit flat for me so it's about five minutes I'm not gonna play the entire thing but this is essentially the crux of what Luke Thomas had to say regarding some of the back and forths going on online between people that don't like Brendan people that like Darren Till and all that malarkey so if, listen to what he has to say and then I'll come on the other side uh, Luke what do you think of Darren Till saying quote let's sign a petition to get Brendan Schaub out of MMA end quote because of the reaction to the Logan and Mayweather fight. I mean, I don't know what you fucking guys want from Brendan. Listen, I'm not going to go and rush to anyone's defense like it's a like they're a damsel in distress. Brendan's a big boy, and you want to be in the spotlight. People are going to go after you, right? So if Darren Good point. wants to go after him, I, I, fine, go after him. Like, I, it's whatever, you know? Um, you know, you can't, you can't police people's tastes in that way. But at the same time, I, I watched the clip and I'm like, I'm really kind of struggling to understand what the problem is here. Uh, Come on, Luke. I don't know the nature of their friendship and everyone wants to assume that everything Brendan does is bad faith, which, you know, you're entitled to that. But knowing the guy personally, it's just just doesn't match the reality that I know. And you can take that for what it's worth. And more to the point, dude, the guy, him and Logan Paul are friends. Logan Paul won eight rounds with Nate Mayweather, and he got whooped, but like relative to what I thought was going to happen and all of you thought was going to happen, he, he overperformed. And to some extent, he does have a point. Fair enough. Logan Paul did overperform, and it was a, maybe a win in his book because prior to the fight, everyone did assume Floyd Mayweather was going to get Logan Paul out of that ring ASAP, and it didn't happen. For whatever reason, it didn't happen. Maybe size differences, who knows? But prior to the fight, we were all under the impression that Floyd Mayweather was going to absolutely destroy Logan Paul. He did end up destroying him and winning overall. But in terms of a dominating performance that really let it be known that there's actual levels to this, we didn't actually get that in that fight. Understandable. But there's a way to go about things, isn't it? There's just a way to go about things. And rocking up to somebody's dressing room after that fight, especially somebody as well known as a Logan Paul, who's obviously, you know, hotter than fish grease at the moment and then trying to pretend that you're friends when we clearly know you're not and if we look at the actual tape and assess when that friendship started it seems a bit flimsy to me you know as much as you know Luke Thomas will, could want to be a bit oblivious to what's actually going on and what people are actually saying the truth of the matter is no one really believes that they're friends for one and number two it's just clout chasing isn't it? it is a clout chasing to the extreme interesting part about it is that it's not really a big issue when it comes to somebody like a Tim Dillon right Tim Dillon kind of enjoys the absurdity of him being friends of all these really attractive young male tiktokers right he enjoys the absurdity of it he kind of makes fun of himself like about hanging out with these kind of people and takes a piss out of himself in that regard but with brendan for some reason he kind of wants us to believe or the world to believe that this is actually a real friendship rooted in something more than just kind of engagement in social media followers which it is which isn't a bad thing but just call a spade a spade and then to make matters even worse for some reason um brendan decided to kind of address the whole thing on his podcast recently and he said sat down and kind of you know inadvertently don't get me wrong I don't think he wanted to speak about himself because the last thing he wants to do is go back and forth with Darren Till on social media because he's definitely going to lose that fight in terms of the funnies and in terms of public perception you know people have this thing where they just hate Brendan for whatever reason that they hate him for and I guess Darren Till even though he hasn't necessarily been you know performing to his best in the octagon he has somehow managed to turn the tide when it comes to public perception I feel like there's a time where people didn't like Darren for a while but then now he's kind of turned it around so you can't really lose in that sort of like you know how he's perceived by the hardcore fans he kind of similar to like a Nate Diaz for me in that regard doesn't really matter how he performs not to gun he's always gonna have people that are gonna ride out for him so I think Brendan's smart not to kind of you know go back and forth in the comments but he did address it a little bit on the podcast here and it's a funny way to address it and maybe this kind of highlights some of the reasons why people aren't necessarily fans of Brendan when it comes to him being a stand-up because I guess this sort of stance and reply is fine if you're just like a normal dude just as a podcast but if you're somebody that you know purports to be a stand-up comedian um you kind of can't be this serious right you can't be this easily wound up you can't get be this easily triggered or you can't be this easily fragile in that regard you can't really be that kind of dude if you want to be a comedian in my opinion and again i don't know jack shit i've, I've never done any sort of stand-up i haven't got the balls to do that sort of thing so i'm just talking about it from an outsider's perspective but again from what i understand part of the core dna of being a stand-up comedian is having some element of self-deprecation right being able to kind of laugh at yourself and how dumb and idiotic and you know 
cringy you are right it was only recently i remember seeing a video of andrew schultz kind of laughing at his own hypocrisy right when it comes to him deciding to move to from new york to miami i think it was right because at, at the time he was saying that everyone that leaves new york during covid is a pussy and they're not really new yorkers and then obviously because he wasn't able to do his job and to do the thing that he loved in terms of stand-up he decided to move too and he was just loving himself at the hypocrisy of it and that's how you're meant to sort of operate as a comedian but it feels like with brendan he's incredibly thin skin for a stand-up and it's really interesting very very strange right but so it's odd that he's kind of got this thing going on here but who knows what it's about why he does it but let's hear what brendan's reply is concerning everything that's going on with darren till and his views on getting him out of mma i try to post a lot of memes right. this is whatever i see you know i'll look darren till responding to me oh you went at on till? ig uh-huh what till say uh he said are you still arguing like people are and allegedly people on the people on the, the fire dickens subreddit some of the only some of the most funniest people on the earth they refer to this guy on the left as bgl big gay lion and i just can't get out of my head every time i see him honestly it makes me laugh so much and again he doesn't seem like a bad dude he seems pretty cool right he, you know it's la everyone's got to have a bit of a shtick about them when i went out there in what 2016 that was pretty evident to see from the places that i went to right everyone's got to have a little you know whatever it is whether you play like a banjo with your toes or something you gotta have something that you kind of have to use in order to kind of get yourself in the entertainment industry so no hate um in my game for that or no hate in my blood for that reason right but it's just the like um the quickness of this friendship is just utterly insane in it this guy didn't exist 12 months ago maybe six months ago and then all of a sudden he's all up in the podcast he's attending all the shows all up in the comments and stuff fighting for brendan's honor it's such a weird place but then i understand if brendan on his side of things he'd probably push back and say hey he actually is my friend because in la terms you know friendships is like cat years isn't it right like you you, you become friends with somebody in a very very short period of time because you have to quickly ascertain whether or not this person can be beneficial to you get into where you want to get to in your career and it's a kind of a mutual beneficiary yeah M mutually beneficial kind of relationship in that regard right i understand where i'm kind of trying to go you understand where you're trying to go and us aligning can kind of make this work because one thing for sure you're never going to just see some regular average doe guy like a mechanic just sitting on that chair right on that podcast just hanging out because he's funny no you're going to need somebody that has something right you know like i say they play football with their elbow or something they're going to need some sort of like stick some sort of thing that they can kind of use to kind of get themselves in and this is kind of one of the perfect things but yeah this guy i guess was going back and forth with darren till it looks here on the comment section about what he said why who knows but hey everyone has to kind of use what they have to make sure that they get where they have to get so no hate in that regard but just referring to him as bgl is just hilarious man it's just like honestly it's laughing it's <laughs> <laughs> let's play the video are you still arguing till you just read through 150 comments mm -hmm. uh on your page yeah till's fascinating to me i don't i never punch down you know i know good if, ouch if you, if you win more <laughs> fights i'll address it you know if you if you get on a, a run there i'll, I'll address right. it, my man and i think he got like all he was doing i'm just talking he, that's a weird thing to say though when you're someone like a brendan in it you, you wouldn't necessarily say he had the most glittering mma slash ufc career would you maybe he means because i think there was a period where he had like 2011 or late 2013 where he had like a good four win streak right maybe if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken there was a period where he had it and then because i don't think he had more than two losses back to back to be fair to him it's always kind of you know a two losses a couple of wins maybe a loss again a couple of wins um but pff, tough thing to say especially when you compare competition when brendan was fighting in ufc the level of competition was nowhere near what it is now especially in darren till's weight class it's just insane the people he's lost to you know it's, it's no shame who he's lost to obviously maybe the only person blotching his career darren till might be tyron woodley right i think he if i'm not mistaken that was a submission as well and tyron woodley nowadays is a complete shadow of himself but maybe you know in what in kind of down to his defense maybe he faced tyron woodley a year too early you know a year before he kind of started to kind of go yeah because if i remember correctly woodley beat till and then faced Kamara Usman so that's when obviously we then started to see oh shit Tyron Woodley's on the downward kind of trajectory so he was just unlucky in that respect um, Darren Till facing somebody like a Woodley and of course maybe his um, takedown defense wasn't what it needed to be blah -de blah 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 but still the level of competition for Darren Till's facing to what Brendan Shaw was facing is just night and day but you know I guess if, if somebody's poking at you you gotta shoot back but bringing up MMA record UFC record is probably the worst way to go about this when you want to win that kind of back and forth because the amount of compilation 
musicians that are out there that exist are Ben Shaw getting knocked out again with no shame getting knocked out but people kind of you know like to point out how often he did get knocked out and the fact that he didn't really look as great he as he maybe thought he looked in that division who knows but it's just a weird kind of point to attack I would assume maybe I'm just again I'm a casual what do I know but it just seems a little bit of a strange point to go against but let's continue some shit back to him but but in that he seemed cool yeah for sure like he was all his his little buddies and there was a lot the reason there's 150 comments there is because all these all these till dick riders were like Fuck you! You wouldn't fucking step in a cage. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. You, somebody want to pay me like uh, half a million dollars to step in a cage until? Sure, let's do it. I'm the but least. That's not gonna happen. I'm the least of Till's problem. He, his, you know, he was supposed to be the guy, man. He was supposed right. to be the next Michael Bisbing, and it hasn't worked out for him. It yeah, just yeah. I, I'm a fan. And that's a weird thing to say when Michael Bisbing. When did Michael Bisbing become champion? When he beat Finger Majiggy. Was it Luke Rockhold that he beat to become champion? Or some BS? I forgot which one again. Casual fan here. But he was pretty old, if I'm assuming. Quite long in the tooth before he actually got the belt. And he didn't. He didn't keep it long. I think he lost it after one defense, right? If I'm not mistaken. Still got it. Don't get me wrong. But it's not as if, you know, um, Biz being held onto the belt for a very long time. He was a flipping amazing, amazing UFC fighter in his time. But this comparison with Darren Till and <laughs> Michael Bisping, when you think again, the level of competition, the the age, um, the experience, it's just weird. Very, very weird point to make. But again, he has to shoot back, so I don't begrudge the guy, but I just think it's a weird point to attack because, you know, this is e- this is an easy win for somebody to get at Brenda when it comes to his record because this, there's one thing I've realised he gets quite sensitive about is how he basically he performed in UFC and of course which led to the whole infamous conversation with Rogan about you know um, him getting fucked up if he continues blah de blah 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 but still he, the fact that he did it is um, is amazing to say the least you know I mean this guy coming from American football to transition over to UFC and to fight that long to be I think he was top 50 ranked if I'm not mistaken maybe top 10 for, for a time he was on his way to maybe maybe contending for the title and then you know it didn't work out for him but the fact that he did it is still incredible but to use that to pin somebody else is just dumb and again the whole premise of this is just Darren Till laughing at how cringy that video was of him walking into Logan Paul's dressing room and it is it's something that you should maybe it's that's the sort of video you should like leave a comment underneath Darren Till's video laughing face emoji saying yeah that's ridiculous I know how bad it looks but he's my friend that's how you know it is what it is that that whole thin skin the inability to laugh at yourself is just it doesn't make sense for a stand-up comedian it really doesn't i root I, for I, the yeah guy. like i want him to figure his shit out yeah and you know i'm sure this instagram is great and all that and I'm, maybe he gets you know uh positive affirmation from his instagram stuff like that that's great yeah but when you tell ari hawani you're dead broke it's like dude that's not paying your bills. Mm. Get in the gym and get focused, man. Yeah. You're supposed to be the guy. Yeah. UFC gave you every opportunity to be successful. Yeah. Head headline in Liverpool. Right. It's Woodley and all this stuff. You were supposed to be the guy. Yeah. As of now, you've been a failed guy. Yeah. Oof. I don't have time for it, dude. Right. Until you get your shit together, yeah. you won't get a word out of me, man. Yeah. This is- you got, got a few words out of you then, didn't you? Yeah? To be completely honest. No, got a few words. This is the most you get out of me. Yeah. And people are asking, oh, geez, is Brennan telling you to comment? I'm like, no, I, I'm talking. <sighs> How cringe, man. Like, come on, man. Get get some self-respect. Is Brendan telling me to... Honestly, grown men shilling for other grown men like this online is just like... It's nothing makes you want to bath more in your mouth. But hey, again, like I said, it's LA, so it's like a... You know, it's not really the real world. But yeah, what do you think? Do you think um, Brendan was in within his right to attack Darren Till's UFC record... Um, his inability to maybe actualize his potential, the fact that he hasn't replicated Michael Bisbee's success, um, the fact that he regarded um, Darren Till as below him. I'm not going to punch down, even though he spent a minute and something talking about it. Um, what do you think of BGL's defense of Brendan on Darren Till's um, Instagram comments? Do you think Darren Till would absolutely smoke BGL in the octagon? Or do you think with a couple months training, BGL could get to the point where he could, you know, maybe take down um, Darren Till and essentially just sit on his face and roar into his mouth <laughs> what do you think would happen i'd love to know down below in the comments let me know your thoughts feelings and suggestions on it it's a little bit of a stupid one but hey you gotta keep the news coming in but yeah let me know what you think about it in the comments down below i'd love to know your feelings and suggestions for now peace